Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, once again, uh, let me uh, welcome you in this uh, foundation engineering lecture. And uh, today, once again, I will continue with the same topic that is quick review of soil mechanics. And I have uh, discussed already uh, two aspects one is origin of the soil, and another is uh, classification, engineering classification. And today, I uh, will again uh, try to uh, cover this weight volume relationship and effective stress concept, which is actually very much essential in every calculation, in fact. And sometime uh, when we will actually solve the foundation problem, we may not go in detail about that uh, as you uh, assuming that we have the enough background and we quickly we calculate that. So, since we have to use frequently these things, so I am just reviewing quickly. And let me go to the uh, first slide uh, that is weight volume relationship. Actually, you can see that uh, when the soil mass is idealized, dry soil mass, if you idealized, then what you will get? Actually, you can idealize the all solid part together. And suppose uh, uh, like this, uh, you can in, this is the total volume of the solid then when uh, the soil and then if I idealize the solid part and put together this this is the volume of solid suppose and this is the air. When it is a dry soil there will be two phases only air and uh, solids. And again uh, when this air is uh, fully uh, filled up uh, by uh, water only then it will become it is called saturated soil and then it will be again still it will be two phase diagram and it will be solid and water the water volume will be replaced by air volume and solid will be as it is. And uh, this is a saturated soil and this water whatever uh, whether it is water or air we generally call it as a void. So, this is the within the soil mass whatever the voids are there it can be either filled up by air or by water. So, this is the one. So, uh, both are actually two phase diagram when it is completely dry or completely uh, saturated both cases in two phases either water solid or air solid, but in most cases uh, soil will be in the three phases partly will be filled up by air partly by water the entire void space will be two parts now partly the whatever air voids are there if you put together this may be the volume of air and whatever water present in the soil mass that you put together this may be the volume of water. So, and solid remain unchanged. So, this is the three phase diagram and uh, this is uh, if I give this all notations and then uh, you can uh, uh, have a number of things uh, uh, based on these we have defined number of uh, uh, parameters like void ratio which is equal to volume of void by volume of solid then porosity again uh, volume of void by total volume. And interestingly, you can find out if this is the definition, then what will be the value of void ratio, minimum value, and maximum value. Uh, it can, it, if it is a, if you imagine the soil is completely filled up by solid and there is no voids, okay, then void become zero, and then your uh, solid become full, then it become zero, and you can see, you can imagine other side also that the soil mass is very very negligible and become close to 0 then in that case this become 0 and this become entire volume then that become a very large value that means theoretically void ratio can be uh, between 0 and infinity, but most of the time it will have a finite value that means it can go beyond 1 also void ratio 1, 1 1.5 that also possible. Similarly, porosity if I see this diagram then this value ratio. Uh, of course, they have uh, definite relationship between porosity and void ratio, but from this definition again we can see that uh, porosity can vary only between 0 and 1. So, you can see the from the definition. Uh, next is that uh, G s, G s is nothing but total solid present divided by V uh, s comma w and these are the different definition we use. And rho w is 1 gram per centimeter meter cube or 1 megagram per meter cube. These are actually units sometimes we make mistake. So, that should be very careful and see uh, gamma w is rho uh, uh, w into g 
and generally uh, g is the acceleration due to gravity and which is 9.81 and this 9.81 uh, when you use accurate actual uh, wanted to wanted to use accurate calculation then the 9.81 can be used otherwise in civil engineering calculation all loads and forces are so huge so this uh, we generally uh, uh, for simplicity in calculation we sometimes use instead of 9.81 10 kilo Newton uh, 10 uh, actually and uh, as a result of that uh, that calculation will be simplified. And this uh, the specific gravity whatever the, the is definition is given uh, based on that one can estimate in the laboratory. However, uh, that uh, most of the soil particles uh, whatever we have investigated over the time for particle uh, specific gravity the value generally does not go below 2.6 sometime it goes, but most of the time most soil will uh, range between 2.6 to 2.75. Sometime if in some problem the specific gravity is not given most of the time we can we are uh, uh, we al you are allowed to assume a suitable value between 2.6 to 2.75 most of the time 2.67, 2.75. 2.7 people can uh, assume and uh, whatever calculation we get uh, it will be quite accurate. So, these are the things actually you as a civil engineer one has to remember that uh, uh, that unit weight of water is 1000 kg per meter cube and uh, your um, uh, specific gravity of soil solid uh, soil solid will be between 2.6 to 2.75 these are the things uh, to be remembered because sometime it will be assumed this is known actually so should should you should remember this these are the things. Uh, next thing is uh, uh, sometime water content is another important term that is weight of water by weight of solid this is actually defined as water content and water content is very very important because uh, sometime uh, uh, with the addition of water uh, or soil behavior has changed greatly. So, you need to know what water content present water is present what amount of water present in the soil and so we always find out from the sample uh, water content of the soil and how we find out we take initially moist weight and then put it in a oven and after 24 hours and we take again dry weight and from there loss of weight will be nothing but weight of water and then we can weigh also solid uh, our difference of uh, final weight also actually is the weight of solid. So, difference between two weights is the uh, weight of water and final weight is the weight of solid. So, this ratio will give you water content. So, these are the things uh, basic things actually everywhere every calculation will be required. So, because of that I am uh, just reviewing quickly. Uh, next is uh, weight volume relationship uh, uh, again uh, there are number of uh, unit weights you can see I just uh, uh, first uh, bring all together and uh, sorry. Uh, you can see this uh, bulk unit of weight bulk unit weight of uh, uh, of soil uh, this is one formula g plus a c plus 1 plus and there is a relationship s into e equal to equal to w multiplied by g. So, there actually instead of a c if I put w g then it become g 1 plus w divided by 1 plus e. Uh, gamma w. So, this is this is one formula and it also sometimes this can be used and again uh, this is the one. So, bulk unit weight either this unit this equation or this equation when degree of saturation and void ratio is given you can use this when void ratio and water content is, is given then when we can use this equation. Similarly, now uh, if I take this equation now degree of saturation is known. So, A is 10 uh, degree of saturation 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent uh, or even 100 percent or even 0. So, based on that I can modify this equation for different other bulk unit weight uh, other unit weight like suppose degree of saturation is 100 percent that means, soil is completely saturated then S become 1 and I put this S value 1 then this equation we get which is the unit weight of saturated soil. Saturated soil. And now, if I put uh, in this S equal to 0 that means, completely dry 
then in that case h becomes 0 and this part becomes 0. So, this equation will be modified to this form that means dry unit weight of the soil will be g s gamma w by 1 plus e. So, there are uh, bulk unit weight, saturated unit weight and dry unit weight and next actually sometimes buoyant unit weight that means water when it is under water this will have buoyant unit weight which will be acting actually. So, the buoyant unit weight of the soil will be saturated unit weight minus unit weight of water and if you do that the saturated unit weight of this and unit weight of water this and then if I uh, subtract then I will arrive at this equation. So, it means g minus 1 by 1 plus e into gamma w this is also sometime uh, unit weight or sometime is not given, but you know the g value and if you know the e value then below water table unit weight you can calculate from this equation. Similarly, uh, if, the, the, if it is uh, unit weight is not given, but degree of saturation or water content is given and void ratio is given, then either using this equation or this equation we can find out the bulk unit weight. Similarly, if it is a dry unit weight, suppose uh, you want to find out dry unit weight and you need, if you know the void ratio, then we can find out by using this equation. So, these are the things that we need to know sometime. Uh, void ratio is one of the important parameter then degree of saturation and water content. So, if you know those things gamma w always you can assume as 9.81 or 10 and then rest of the calculation can be done. And there is a relationship between bulk unit weight and the dry unit weight. So, this is the another relationship gamma bulk will be equal to gamma d by gamma d will be equal to gamma bulk by gamma w. So, this also can be established by uh, using uh, the uh, all uh, parameter whatever we have introduced and uh, gamma d if you know the gamma bulk and if you can find out the water content then you can find out the gamma dry also. That means, partially saturated soil. So, those are the things I have told it is a completely this is ideal that means, either saturated or dry but bulk unit weight is the in between stage most of the soil in the construction soil will have partially uh, uh, saturated that means, uh, water content will be there uh, less than uh, saturated. In that case you can find out the bulk unit weight by either this and this, but how to find out the dry unit weight if you know the water content then by this and this is very very important in many road construction because when you construct the road uh, the the construction material that means soil is uh, recommended based on the dry unit weight that you have to achieve the this much dry unit weight and best. So, because of that you have to select number of sites and from those sites again uh, you have to uh, uh, you have to carry out this uh, Proctor test and then find out uh, you have to find out what is the maximum dry unit weight can be achieved and based on that we can select the site. And when you will come to the site and during construction you know that what unit weight you have to achieve then what you have to do time to time during construction you have to sample it get the uh, bulk unit weight by some mechanism and then determine the water content and then you will get the dry unit weight. When you see that dry unit weight achieved and dry uh, unit weight recommended they are close enough then we can certify the construction is done as per as per specification. So, that is the thing uh, uh, this, this gamma d is very very useful most of the time in embankment construction. And next is the effective stress. So, void volume relationship one part and then effective stress they are closely related to uh, each other and you can see that that effective stress when we have discussed in soil mechanics or you have studied from some book and this is the final formula we generally use that is uh, sigma effective will be equal to total stress minus u and how it is done actually from this formulation actually if I uh, draw a line here and then I, it will pass through number of contact points and each contact point the force will be in a different direction, but you can take the component in the vertical direction and if I uh, right equation of equilibrium in the vertical direction then you get this equation and as per degree then if you divide by a in all sides then you will get this equation 
and as per definition uh, sigma total stress equal to actually P applied over the cross sectional area. So, this is sigma and by definition actually summation of all, all normal component divided by the area is the effective this is the our definition which may not be correct actually the you are dividing by the total area. Okay. So, that is not actually contact points will be much less than the actual area, but this is as per our definition the effective stress is defined at that whether that the different contact points whatever normal components are there summation of all normal components divided by the total area is defined as effective stress. So, if I do this then this becomes so this equation modified to this equation and then equation to modify to this way that sigma equal to sigma dash plus u sigma dash is nothing but effective stress effective stress sometimes is some book it is write by sigma bar. So, both are same and we can use any of them and so this become like this, but we are interested to find out some sigma effective that uh, effective stress. So, effective stress if I express different separately then it become sigma minus u. So, that means if there is a ground here like this and if I want to find out and water table suppose also here then I if I want to find out the effective stress here then what I have to do I have to find out the uh, uh, the total load acting over this divided by area and if I consider a unit area here if I consider unit cross sectional area and this length of the column is L then total volume will be unit area multiplied by L this become the volume and if I multiply by unit weight that become the W actually and then W the total weight divided by area again equal to 1. So, that means it become nothing but uh, 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 so this is this sigma this sigma is nothing but actually uh, this uh, weight by area. Uh, so, that is actually nothing but gamma times since it is unit weight, unit length. So, it is only gamma times L gamma times L is enough to find out the total stress at this point. So, similarly uh, if you want to find out the water pressure at this point. So, yeah, I can consider again a unit uh, column of water here. Uh, so, at this point total weight of water will be again unit weight 1 multiplied by L multiplied by gamma W and this divided by 1 by 1. So, this nothing but gamma W. So, u equal nothing but gamma W into L. So, that means total stress will be equal to gamma of water I'm sorry gamma of soil multiplied by the depth at which you want to find out the total stress. Similarly, if you want to find out the water pressure at a particular depth then unit weight of water multiplied by the depth at which I want to find out the water pressure will be equal to the pore water pressure that now we have got two component this become sigma this become u then I can find out what is the effective stress acting here that is sigma minus u. So, this is the way actually we need to uh, calculate uh, now. So, th this is the uh, uh, effective stress concept. And now, uh, uh, as I have already explained, uh, you can see one second I am repeating here effective vertical stress due to cell point of soil. As I have drawn, suppose if this is the soil and I want to find out at this point, that means because of the cell point of soil, whatever pressure is coming here, that is actually sigma v or sigma uh, that will be equal to uh, not necessarily it will be gamma saturated always. Uh, if it is water table is here only then only gamma saturated into z otherwise if it is a uh, partially saturated then it will be gamma bulk into z. So, this is the uh, 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 sigma v and pore water pressure will be again uh, uh, if I consider water table is here and then this is the depth is z then your uh, you, you, uh, pore water pressure equal to gamma w into z and assume that water table is here then this equation also valid for sigma v. Now, sigma dash will be ultimately sigma v minus u and that is actually gamma sat minus gamma w into z that means gamma submerged multiplied by z. So, gamma submerged how to find out 
if you know that is actually sometime g minus 1 by 1 plus e multiplied by gamma w you can use it or if I can find out gamma bulk and minus gamma w by, by, by direct calculation of these two parameter we can do this or if you know the specific gravity and void ratio we can also find this, this way. So, this is the uh, uh, calculation procedure for effective stress. Now, uh, let us uh, see a problem a layer of saturated clay um, uh, saturated clay layer uh, sorry layer is to uh, 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 5 meter thick is overlain uh, this uh, sorry this layer may not be required a saturated clay layer 5 meter thick is overlain by 5 meter deep sand layer. Uh, and water table being 2 meter. So, if I draw this, if I draw this, it comes like this. So, suppose this is 5 meter that is sand and this is 5 meter suppose clay. So, this is suppose clay and this is suppose sand and, and water table is somewhere here that way this is 2 meter, this is 3 meter and this is actually your uh, 5 meter and you can see that the the unit weight unit weight of the clay is uh, 19 and sand is 20 and uh, and what uh, sand unit weight above water table is actually given 17. So, now if I want to find out the effective stress at different location that means I want to find out at this location I want to find out that location water table location I want to find out the in between layer I want to find out at the bottom of the layer. So, at this point sigma total sigma at the surface will be 0 and total sigma at this point will be 2 multiplied by 17 2 multiplied by 17 and at this point your uh, uh, your uh, uh, sigma will be 2 multiplied by 17 plus 3 multiplied by 20 and at this point your sigma will be 2 multiplied by 17 plus 3 multiplied by 20 plus 5 multiplied by 19. So, if I do all those things then it becomes 0 here in uh, this become 34 here and this become uh, 94 uh, this is 20 actually this become 94 and this become 189. So, this is actually sigma similarly I can find out u at the surface it is 0 at the water table also 0 at 3 meter it will be 3 into 10 3 multiplied by 10 and at at this level 8 multiplied by 10 and then if I want to find out sigma dash then what I will be doing I will be doing 0 minus 0 at this surface actually effective stress is 0 and then at water table level that is 2 meter depth. So, it is 0 at 2 meter depth it will be 34 and at 5 meter depth it will be 94 minus 30 that will be 64 and at 10 meter depth it will be 189 minus 80. So, it will be 109. So, this is actually sigma dash nothing but sigma minus u and this is sigma calculation this column this column is sigma this column is u and this column is sigma dash. So, this is the way one can calculate. Now, uh, this is another thing is mentioned here that uh, uh, if the sand above the water table gets saturated with capillary water how are the above stresses affected. So, uh, saturated means now uh, water table is here water table is here, but it is saturated by capillary rise. In that case actually when there is a capillary rise uh, unit weight is here 20 here also you have to consider now 20, but pore water pressure variation when you do uh, pore water pressure u variation uh, earlier earlier was u variation of 
earlier case was like this that means, it was 0 and it was 80, but present condition your u diagram will be your u diagram will be. So, sorry. So, so your uh, u diagram will be something like this that means, above water table when water is getting up that will be negative this will be minus and this will be plus this will be same 80, but there will be minus 2 multiplied by 10. So, when the it is not saturated this was the pore pressure diagram and when it is saturated uh, or by capillary rise this is the pore pressure diagram this is the difference in pore water pressure will be observed and in addition to this uh, there will be little change in effective stress also because total stress will change now. So, how much change will be there the this depth we have considered total unit weight uh, by earlier we have considered uh, uh, 17 into multiplied by 2, but it will be taken now 20 multiplied by it will be taken multi it will be total uh, will be uh, 20 multiplied by 2 uh, or actually I can take 20 multiplied by 5. 20 multiplied by 5 plus 19 multiplied by 5. So, it will be 195. So, there is a change in total stress it was uh, 189 now it become 195 and if I want to find out effective stress at, th at this point now before it was 18 189 minus uh, 189 minus 80 it was 109 now it become 195 minus 80. So, it will become 115. So, this there is a little change in effective stress. So, because of this. So, these are actually the minor changes when the water uh, soil above the water table gets saturated. So, there will be change in pore water pressure diagram and again there is one more change effective stress theoretically at the surface will be total stress is 0, 0 here at this point total stress is 0, 0 minus minus u. So, it will become 20 at the surface theoretically. Okay. So, this is the only change we can find out uh, when a soil is get saturated. So, this is the thing very frequently uh, will be used in effective stress calculation in many calculation particularly in compressibility problem. Uh, you need to know uh, or shear strength problem also you need to know what is the effective stress at any depth because shear strength is function of effective stress, compressibility also function of effective stress and every frequently we calculate this. So, because of that I have once again elaborately uh, 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 discuss this. Uh, next problem is a variation is effective as already I have highlighted. Uh, 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 variation in effective stress with the seeped in ground water table you can see for water table below the ground surface a rise in water table cause a decrease in effective stress and a fall in water table produces a increase in the effective stress. So, that means, uh, if your uh, if your water table somewhere here and then if water table goes up suppose because of the seasonal variation water table goes up then what will happen your total stress, stress will be increased little, but pore water pressure will be significantly increased because of this this gamma w into this much height and so that much water table uh, that much uh, 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 pore water pressure if you subtract then automatically effective stress will be decreasing that means, if the water table moves in this direction then effective stress will be decreased and if the water table moves this direction then your what effective stress will be increasing. That means, water table as uh, if it is if it goes deeper and deeper then you will expect more effective stress in the soil. Similarly, for water level above the ground surface a fluctuation in the exposed water level does not alter the effective stress. That means, what if your ground surface is somewhere here and water is somewhere here. Now, if water table comes down this side 
or goes up this side it will not make any difference if I want to consider a point here to find out effective stress. So, if you find out the effective stress here then because of this change of water table uh, above uh, this direction or this direction where water table was originally above water table and still fluctuation is above water table uh, above ground water level uh, sorry ground surface then there will be hardly there will not be any change in effective stress. And the last point whatever I have shown during the competition the effect of shift of uh, uh, in the ground surface will cause a change in effective stress of magnitude equal to the change in the overburden pressure. That means, what I have shown then uh, when because of this, this water table was he, water, uh, water table was here and ground surface was there and this much depth was uh, saturated by capillary rise and because of that I have considered unit weight from 17 to 20. So, that means that how much change will be there because of the effective stress of magnitude equal to the change in the overburden pressure there actually it became actually uh, 109 to 115 then how much was change it was 9 uh, sorry uh, 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 6 109 to 115 the 6 increase and 6 increase because of what the unit weight change from 17 to 20. So, that 3 multiplied by 2 6. So, that is the thing is mentioned here effective uh, effect of shift in the ground surface will cause a change in the effective stress of magnitude equal to the change in the overburden pressure. Okay. So, this is the things uh, three important point uh, uh, regarding uh, effective stress uh, I just highlighted here. And next actually if uh, uh, the previous problem whatever I have solved there actually unit weight are all given, but instead of giving of what unit weight if the if they give you the uh, void ratio and your specific gravity then we can find out dry unit weight. Uh, then uh, saturated unit rate, then uh, uh, your uh, dry saturated bulk unit rate and based on that we can again calculate similarly what is the uh, total pressure, what is the uh, pore water pressure and what is the effective pressure. Only one step more you have to do what based on this is suppose uh, gamma bulk you have to use suppose gamma uh, you have to use suppose gamma d then g s uh, gamma w by 1 plus e. So, for gamma sand above water table you have to find out you use this equation because e is given, g is given, gamma w can be assumed. Similarly, below water table you want to find out. So, you can find out uh, uh, gamma bulk will be equal to g plus a c by 1 plus e into gamma w. By this equation you can find out gamma uh, sorry this is gamma saturated that means below water table if the sand or clay unit weight you can find out because the un, a, a, uh, void ratio of the uh, soil uh, of the clay and sand is given degree of saturation when below water table it will be 100 percent and g can be assumed or it is given. So, you can find out. So, after computing this uh, the procedure is same that means find out the total pressure, find out the pore pressure and sub, by subtracting uh, uh, them you will get the effective stress. So, that is all I think uh, we can uh, stop here uh, this part that is uh, weight volume relationship and effective stress concept and this will be very frequently will be used in uh, many foundation engineering problem. Uh, uh, okay. So, this is the reason why I have elaborated once again. Thank you.